Well, the latest inflation figures are out. Australia's annual headline inflation rate has risen to 3.8%, up from 36 at the start of the year. So what does this mean when it comes to the possibility of another interest rate hike? Leif Van Onslen is Chief Economist at macrobusiness.com.au. Good afternoon. G'day, Kelly. How are you? Good. So this 3.8%, a surprise or pretty much expected? Well, it's, it was kind of a surprise and also expected. So let me just explain that there's there's two measures that the uh, that the CPI data comes out with from the ADS. It's the headline inflation, which is basically your overall inflation, and that came in at one percent over the quarter, three point eight percent year on year, which was bang in line with economists' forecast. So that's the bit that was as expected. The more important thing, though, is is what's called trimmed mean inflation. So what that is, it's all underlying inflation. So that's basically the inflation measure where you take out the most volatile aspects, and that's the thing that the RBA looks at the most. And that came in actually below expectations at 0.8% versus 1% expected. So that's actually a good news story. Mm. And what it basically means is that uh, you know the result should hopefully be enough to keep the RBA in hold next week because this trim measures come in below what people below what everyone expected. Yeah. So that 0.2 makes that much difference. Yeah, it does. In, in this case, it does. So it was always going to be sort of like one of those knife-edge meetings. Mm. And most economists thought that if it came in at 1% or above, uh, sorry, what 1% was around about the grey area where the RBA could remain on hold or might lift. Anything above 1% was sort mm. of perceived as a definite hike. And now that it's coming at 0.8%, it's more than likely in the balance of probability is going to lead to uh, interest rates remaining on hold. And, and it's also worth pointing out that there was another data set that came out today, which is also important, and that was the retail trade data for the Mm -hmm. June quarter. And what that showed is that the consumer economy is stuck deep in recession. So basically total retail sales volumes, that's once you strip out inflation, fell by 0.3% over the quarter, and they're down by 0.6% year on year. And here's here's the real kicker though, Kelly. The annual change in retail sales has now been negative for, for the last five quarters. And outside the pandemic, in only... Four other quarters has the annual growth been negative dating back to the 1980s. And even worse, once you strip out population growth, um, real retail sales per capita are down 3% year on year. So that basically tells you that the consumer economy is incredibly weak. Mm. And based on that data, the RBAs you know, w- would be less likely to raise rates, other things equal. So the retail sector would be really feeling this now. Oh, they, they are getting absolutely smashed. Yeah. So basically, they've they've been in recession for pretty much two years, two consecutive full years, if you adjust for population growth. Mm. And obviously, they're also being buffeted by an increased take up in uh, in online retail. So obviously, Amazon's grown its share. There's some reports come out this week that Amazon's grown its share of Australia's retail market. Mm-hmm. And as a result, if you're a bricks and mortar retail, especially in the discretionary space, so that's areas where it's the, it's the nice to have things, not the things you need. So it's not not, not about food retailing here. We're talking about, you know, the luxury – well, not, not the luxury items, but the stuff you don't necessarily have to buy. Yep. If you're in that space, you're going to really struggle because people are getting squeezed by rising rents, rising mortgage payments, obviously because of interest rates, general cost of living, and at the same time as they're facing more competition from Amazon and eBay and the likes like that. Mm. So Lee Van Onselen's Chief Economist at macrobusiness.com.au. We're talking about the inflation figures which are out today. Australia's annual rate has risen to 3.8%, up from 36 at the start of the year. But as we've heard, the, head, the uh, trimmed mean rate has, uh, has set at 0.8, uh, which looks like that the Reserve may, may just let us all off the hook when it comes to another rate rise. And, and we're starting to see reports of, of just how many people, Leith, might, might, if there was to be a rate rise, um, you know, another 2,000 apparently uh, predicted to feel the pressure so much they wouldn't be able to repay their, their mortgage. Like this is a lot of people now right under the pump. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, Australians are getting squeezed across the board. There's, I've said it previously. I think I think I said it. To, I might have said it to you the last mm. time we spoke a couple of months back that there's basically three Australians at the moment. So you've got roughly one third of Australians rent, and they're getting absolutely hammered by spring rental costs. Yep. We've seen the rental crisis, you know, firsthand, especially up there in Brisbane. Uh, secondly, around one third of Australians have owned occupier mortgages. They're obviously getting absolutely hammered by rising mortgage rates. Mm. It's really only the other third who own their homes outright who tend to be much older. 
yep. who are basically insulated from this. So really two thirds of Australia is getting hammered. And unfortunately, the RBA's rate hikes are very blunt and they really only impact directly the one third of Australians who have owned occupy mortgages. So we're sort of smashing one third of the society to try and get inflation back mm. on behalf of everybody. And it's not the greatest system. It isn't. And look, the, the RBA wants that trimmed mean measure of inflation to fall back down into the 2 to 3% range. What, what chance is there of that? Oh, I think it will happen. I mean, um, a 0.8% quarterly figure means annualised is about 3.2%. Okay. So it's not, it, that, that's basically if you times it by four. Yep. Because it's 0.8% uh, over the quarter. So it's not, you know, miles out of the, the upper bound of that, of that mm. range. So I think it will come down. It's just going to take a little bit of time. And it's also worth pointing out the RBA doesn't just look at uh, the inflation rate. It also has to manage uh, unemployment in the economy. Mm. And while the unemployment rate at 4.1% is pretty low, it is rising. And it's important to note that we've had basically zero, job, zero jobs in the private sector in the last year. All our jobs have mm. come from the government aligned sector and mostly through the NDIS. So, again, it's this story of the private sector economy getting absolutely hammered. And that's the area where I think, you know, the RBA has to be kind of cognizant of. Yeah. So the indication for the remainder of the year would be? Well, really, it's wait and see. So, you know, while, while the inflation story today was decent, I'm not saying it's great, like mm. it's still too high, um, the RBA has got to remain pretty vigilant. So one of the sticking points is that we still have very high dom domestic inflation. So there's non-tradable inflation, which is basically anything – uh, anything that doesn't come off a container ship mm. that's running at really high levels at 5%. The thing that's pulled down the inflation is anything that comes off a ship. It's called tradable inflation. That's running at just 1.5%. And unfortunately, that non-tradable inflation is being kept high by you know high energy costs, high rents, those sorts of things, which mm. are really outside the control of the RBA. And we really need the federal government to step up with policy to address those areas. Leif Van Onselen, who's Chief Economist at macrobusiness.com.au. So we've got to wait to see what happens with the RBA, but uh, the figures coming through today, indicative of uh, no rate rise from most economists.